Okay, shall we begin? Well done for showing up on a Friday. On a, what a Fridays even mean anymore. Welcome. Welcome to right now. Your daily writing workout. 30 minutes of writing. Exploring. We have the same structure every day with slightly different themes and content. We'll do... Um, forgot my own life there. <laughs> We would, I'll share a poem with you. <laughs> we'll do a three minute free write. We'll then do 10 back to back speed poems or things. We'll take some communal breaths and then I'll give you some editing homework that you can choose to do now or later or never. Totally up to you. <laughs> Today, sorry, I'm getting really started. I don't know why I'm so, I did a run this morning, so kind of slightly got all the endorphins. Can you hear when I crack my neck like that? Don't know if that's good or bad, if you can hear it, but... Today, the theme, courtesy of Hayley. I don't know, Hayley, if you're in the chat. The theme is disruption as opportunity today. So Hayley hit me up um, saying, like, could you do a theme about neurodiversity and difference? Thinking differently, being different from the norm. Marco, oh my God, please tell me you're writing with me today because that would make my heart feel whole. Um, so I'm dyslexic and it's something I didn't write about for a really long time because it kind of, I guess, was directly in conflict with my writing for a really long time and it's something I felt really ashamed of for a long time. And it was really when I started embracing... Um, that disruption of my dyslexia as an opportunity when I started looking at my difference as my unique selling point as the thing that actually differentiated me from all of the other writers out of there out there all the things that I maybe was fighting or having arguments with when I started embracing that disruption as an opportunity that really became a turning point in my writing. I think for a really long time I was like looking at the academic world and the writing world and trying to force myself to be the shape of this thing that I thought I was supposed to be. Um, you know, going to university, doing my creative writing BA, my MA, etc, etc. And then it was really like, well, what about grime? What about bashment? What about dyslexia? What about all these things that I maybe don't see in the world of writing but make me me? Actually, yeah. Let me try that. <laughs> So today is about disruption as opportunity. That's our theme. You know, that's a phrase I use all the time. If you know me anyway, some new people in the chat, if you're here, pick up your writing utensils. This is your opportunity to write. Our prompt poem today is, um, is from this book, Beauty is a Verb. Now, there's a few anthologies that I take with me when I travel everywhere. And this is one of them. It is... Um, the new poetry of disability. Now, um, interestingly, um, so Hayley wanted me to explore specifically invisible disability. Now, this anthology explores disabilities that you can see. But the reason that I wanted to turn to this anthology is because it really helped me start thinking about my differences and how I unpack them. And it gave me a lot of tools to do that. And it's got poems in it and it's got essays in it. Now, before I share the poem with you for today, I want to just share a little story from one of the essays. So this isn't the writer that I'm going to share. It's a different one. But there was a, a poet that was working with an editor and they're working over the phone and the poet would send the editor some of their poems. Um, now, this poet was trying to make their poems look symmetrical. It's a bit of a thing in the page world where you want your poem to look symmetrical. So look kind of consistent on the page, not be kind of, I don't know, I'm trying to find some more poems that look, they all look symmetrical. They've kind of got a sense of um, pattern, repeated pattern. Um, and he was like, the editor over the phone was like, I've noticed you've been doing that. Like you're kind of thinking very visually in terms of um, where you break the line on the page. And they're like, yeah, I had another editor that said, so that's the way to do things. And then the mentor over the phone, he said, okay, I get that, but you're blind and you're a musician. So why have you done that? I get that maybe there's some people that have a theory around that, but what about you, you know? You think very musically, you write very musically, so why not use that to break the line? And I thought, that's mad, isn't it? That's mad, the level of pressure that we feel to do things the way they're done, to a point where even if we're blind, 
we are breaking the line with a visual premise. So I just wanted to share that with you um, for today. <laughs> um, and I'm going to share a poem called Body Language by Kenny Fries. As always, I've put this in my feed if you want to look at it and it is available online. So this is Body Language. What is a scar if not the memory of a once open wound? You press your finger between my toes. Slide the soap up the side of my leg until you reach the scar with the two holes where the pins were inserted 20 years ago. Leaning back, I remember how I pulled the pin from my leg. How in a waist high cast, I dragged myself from my room to show my parents what I had done. Your hand on my scar brings me back to the tub. And I want to ask you, what do you feel when you touch me there? I want you to ask me, what are you feeling now? But we don't speak. You drop the soap in the water and I continue washing alone. Do you know my father would bathe my feet as you do? As if it was the most natural thing. But up to now, I have allowed only two pairs of hands to touch me there. To be the salve for what still feels like an open wound. The skin has healed, but the scars grow deeper. When you touch them, what do they tell you about my life? So that is our free writing prompt poem for today. Um, it was called Body Language. If you want to use the title from that poem to inspire you, feel free to. Just make sure you credit it in a little after under your title. Um, just a little bit of an extra prompt as I always give you. Um, if you ever feel a disruption, feel resistance, feel annoyed at yourself, grab it. <laughs> if your hand hurts, use it. If you're disorientated, use it. I just want to share a little image with you. Um, this is a, the first poem I wrote about my dyslexia. Now, as you can see, so I had this really strong sense of I'd had a TA at primary school always being corrected and getting really angry at myself when I write. So I started crossing things out. Whenever I disagreed with myself, I'd make it red. I'd cross things out. So embrace it. Embrace whatever feels difficult. Make it form. Make it different. I'm going to take that down. Um, cool. Going to free write, which means you're just going to write solidly, not stop. Try not to question yourself for three minutes. Inspired by all of that. <laughs> Spoken quite a lot this morning, but this is something I feel very passionately about. If you've got any questions, let me know before I set the timer for three minutes. <laughs> Debbie just spoke so much. The main thing is three minutes, writing freely, any disruptions you encounter, use it as an opportunity. If you've just jumped in, pick up your pen. Your three minute starts now.
Oof. Okay. That was sticky, huh? Um, cool. I'm in the middle of a workshop at the moment, but in the disruption as opportunity style, before I go on to the next exercise, in terms of neg writing dark negative prose poetry, I mean, just force yourself to do... Sometimes I force myself to do the opposite. Write a dark line, then write the opposite of that line. It's cool, it's cool, man. <laughs> We're talking about disruption as opportunity anyway, so if you feel like you fall into a pattern, it's always good to notice the patterns you fall into of being dark and being negative. Every time you write a dark, negative, prosaic line, just even, like, write the opposite of that line. So, like, go dark and then opposite, 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 opposite. If anything, it gives you something to disagree with. I love disagreeing with myself when I write. Sometimes I write no <laughs> after a line and then disagree with myself. Cool. Let's go into our speed writing now. 10 poems, back to back. This is Deborah's favorite writing exercise in the world. She borrowed it from the lovely Roger Robinson. If you don't know him, get to know if you can ever do a workshop with him, please go. Did I rhyme a little bit there, maybe? Um, we're gonna do 10 poems back to back. I'll give you your title. You'll then have one minute to write six lines of something with that title. When I say something, could be a poem, could be a verse of a song, could be a bit of prose, could be a bit of dialogue. If you want to be super, super jammy, loop them all together into one long 60 line something. All of the titles today are lines from my own writing for a play that I'm developing. That's why I'm doing these, a new play I'm writing for High Tide. Um, so I'd encourage you to just use this as your inspiration point, then edit the title out. But if you feel really attached to it, just please credit me because otherwise, Two of the same lines might end up in my play and your poem. And that'll be confusing, but it's fine. I love sharing. Bit of open source. Sorry, a bit hyper this morning. <laughs> so, um, in terms of extra challenge in with disruption as opportunity, um, it's, it's more of the same, really. Like, you know, there's another story. Um, it was on a TED Talk about a pointer list a guy that did tiny, tiny point paintings so much that um, he, he developed a tremor in his hand and got really, really annoyed at the fact that he, he couldn't do pointillism anymore. And then one day someone said to him, embrace the shake. And then he started doing these amazing pictures with this shake quality, which really created a whole new style of art for him. So embrace the shake. Anytime you feel resistant, it feels difficult, use it. Use it in whatever way you can to surprise yourself. Because muse, because the best writing is surprising. And if it surprises you, it will definitely surprise everyone else. Yeah. Cool. Any questions, let me know. While I set the timer up. So 10 poems, pieces, things, back to back. I give you the title. You write six lines. You have to write six lines. I don't care if they don't make sense. But you have to write them. Yeah. Shall we write? Your first title is Down, Down, Down. Down, Down, Down. Your one minute starts now. Let's go. Okay, your next title is Till It Was Concrete. Till It Was Concrete is your next title. You've got one minute to write six lines with the title Till It Was Concrete. Let's go. Let's go. Till It Was Concrete.
okay? If you just jumped in, you can still write eight poems or bits of something. Your next title is Eaten by Sheep. <laughs> I write some funny things. Eaten by Sheep is your next title. You have one minute starting now. Eaten by Sheep. Let's go. Your next title is Repulsively Sexy. I love a good oxymoron. Repulsively Sexy is your next title. You've got one minute to write six lines of something with the title Repulsively Sexy. Let's go. Okay, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere, guys. <laughs> um, the next title is I Am Small. I Am Small is your next title. You've got one minute to write six lines of something with the title I Am Small. Let's go. Okay, your next title is, yes, Jazz, um, Not Anymore. If you just jumped in, you can still write five poems, we're halfway. If you pick up a pen, your next title is Not Anymore. You've got one minute to write six lines of something with the title Not Anymore.
running over. I'm sorry. The next title is you've got four more. You're doing really well. If your hand hurts, use that feeling. Use that feeling to write somewhere new, to go somewhere new, to surprise yourself. Your next title is what shines. What shines. Your one minute starts now. Okay, three more. <laughs> Sorry, this one is quite strange. <laughs> I didn't realise I put this here. Talk to the taxidermist. A taxidermist is someone that stuffs dead animals. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. Um, talk to the taxidermist is your <laughs> eighth title of the day. And you've got one minute starting now. Let's go. Okay, two more, let's go, let's go. Penultimate title is just one word, one syllable, bird. Bird is your penultimate title, bird. Let's go. Okay, the last title is This Family. This Family is your final title and your one minute starts now. Let's go.
and we're done. And we are done. Congratulations. You made it to the end. You made it to the end. And before we take our communal breaths, let me give you some editing homework that you can choose to do or not do, as always. Um, so if there's a piece that you're avoiding, that you're struggling with at the moment, maybe it's a piece that you've e written and you need to edit, or maybe it's a piece that you know you need to write, but you've been avoiding writing. Um, set yourself a task that enables you to mine into what exactly what is difficult about that. So for example, let's say there's quite a traumatic incident that I want to write about, but I find it really hard to say the incident out loud. And this is an actual exercise I've done. I said, I'm going to write a prose poem. So writing goes to the end of the page. But every time I don't want to say something, I'm just going to leave a big gap, going to leave a massive gap and create this hole in the poem that is all the things I can't say or don't want to say. Or maybe it's a process thing. So for ages, I found that, and this is actually how I wrote a lot of Poet in the Corner, if you've watched that show, I found that I was being very funny as a person, not that you know it now, um, but not in my writing. So um, what I decided to do was take some anecdotes that I tell repeatedly that are quite funny, tell them to my friend, I don't know if Romario is in the chat, but if um, he is, actually I told a lot of them to Romario on the train, I'd tell him the story, I'd record it on my phone, then I'd go home and transcribe it word for word, then I'd turn that into a poem, then I'd turn that into a song. And then when I started doing that, suddenly what side writing was funny because there was this barrier between me as a person interacting with people and me as a writer so I thought let me create a process that helps me bridge that gap right if I start from something I find easy as a writer actually I really like talking I'm quite good at that how do I capture that as a writer okay talk to someone I like record it write it down so just think of try and set yourself tasks that kind of get to the heart of what you're struggling with and use it to generate or edit. Um, if you want to work with the stuff that you've written today, do the same thing, read through it. If there's a certain technique that's come up, maybe you've used repetition. I, for a long time, started using a forward slash in a way that really captured the way I think as a dyslexic person. Take that technique and use it as an edit editing tool. Say, okay, I'm going to use forward slashes throughout this and see what happens if I use that as an editing tool. I'm going to use massive gaps throughout this and see what happens. I'm gonna take this story, I'm gonna tell it to a friend and record it and then write it back down again, yeah? Me just trying to give you tools um, to edit and generate and use disruption as opportunity. I hope this has been helpful. Let's do our breaths before we go. Um, I wanted to add a little stretch to our breath today just because my neck has been really tight with all the tension. So if you can, if you're able, um, if not, just follow the breath as usual. We're going to do um, four inhalations through the nose and out of the mouth. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to put the hands just interlaced like this on the back of the head and very, very gently. Obviously, we've not been doing exercise or any stretching or anything. We're just going to go very gently. We're going to inhale as we go up. And we're going to exhale as we go down. Don't push on the back of the head. Just let the natural weight of the hands. You might do a little rock like that. So we're going to do three of those, yeah? We're going to go in. And out. And in. Be very gentle. Ooh. And out. In. And out. And in. Thank you so much for joining me today on Right Now. Um, I'll carry on over the weekend, same time. 
Um, I have to think of a special one to do on Valentine's Day. I was thinking about maybe doing one that couples could come to together. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and if there are any other themes that you want me to explore, I'm really enjoying going in different directions. Um, let me know. Let me know. Thank you for spending this time with me. I'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Take care.